this is Hannah Oakman, editor of Kuda Innovation Magazine, and I'm here at the BWCA annual conference and trade show with um, Chairman John Dundon, who's also Managing Director of Angel Springs. Um, I just want to ask some questions about your um, perceived future state of the UK water cooler industry. Um, so to start off, how do you think uh, water cooler companies in the UK could work harder to boost the industry as a whole? Well, there's a couple of real simple things. Although the, um, although the market's quite difficult and the economy is difficult, one of the areas that's uh, performing very well is the SME market. Mm. The public sector are going through understandable difficulties. They're either reducing or returning coolers. But the SME side of the economy is actually flourishing. One of the problems that this poses for water cooler companies is it can be quite expensive to get to market. Mm-hmm. But if you get to market, the benefits are what you have is it's a low cost decision. It can be a fairly simple decision by relatively speaking junior members of staff. But the margins are very high and customer loyalty is also very strong. So there's one of the reasons that we're finding it difficult is that people are not investing in actually organic growth into the market. Yeah. And that's one of the areas that they should. This whole thing about um, point, a point of use and bottled also, thankfully, is finally starting to go away. Because the reality is it's just about uh, hydration. Um, the speaker at the, um, <clears throat> at the conference this morning, Dee Blake, quite rightly touched on some of the marketing gaps. And there's only about 18% penetration of VAT businesses in the UK. So once again, we're particular businesses have a fantastic opportunity but they have to put time, effort and money into this is how would they develop and penetrate the 80% of the market that doesn't have a water cooler yeah. and usually it's because one, we don't spend on sales and marketing two, as Dee quite rightly pointed out we don't understand the barriers that they have and we're probably offering the wrong products so there is fantastic opportunities in the SME market both for penetration and for high margins Okay, very good. And how do you feel the British Water Cooler Association can help its members to, to, to make that leap? I think at the end of the day, the association is, is all about trying to uh, set high standards. And first and foremost, that's been critical over the last 20 years. Margins on, on bottled water coolers are holding up quite well. Margins on point-of-use machines are under incredible uh, pressure Mm. and they've probably reduced by 50, 60, 70% over the last three or four years. And that's because the standards have not really been set. There's low barriers to entry and there's overcrowding in the marketplace. We can help in some real simple ways though. We take those standards that we've applied to the market over the last 20 years. We try and put both associations together. We work together as a joint venture with one team to try and raise the standards and what we have to do we have to ensure that there are gaps in the market and the gap is there are bottom up bottom operators and then there are operators at the top end of the market through the quality badge which is the uk association and then they will obtain small premiums for doing that so for sure that's how the um, that's how the uh, the association can help it's quite interesting with the BWCA. I think we've done more in the last uh, two or three years than we've probably done in the last five or six years. <clears throat> the membership has been going backwards for about the last seven or eight years. And we've attracted more new members in the last five months than we have in the last five years. So it's quite interesting. And there are two reasons for that. Mm-hmm. Number one, through all of this activity, we're actually promoting the association. So people who are thinking of joining an association have simply heard of us. They go onto the website, they know about us. That's the first thing. The second thing is what we're doing, of course, is networking through all the things that we're doing. by getting local MPs out, having trade shows and conferences like this. And people therefore begin to trust that the BWCA can help them and give them a competitive advantage. So there are many ways that the association can help. Okay, that's very good. And do you think manufacturers are doing enough to develop new products to help um, distribution companies win new customers? Yeah, it's quite interesting looking at some of the some of the coolers here in the manufacturer's products today. Something that might seem very simple, but I see that Crystal Mountain have a bottom loading cooler. Mm. Now, this was introduced into the UK probably yeah. 10 or 15 years ago. And I think it's probably 
the right product at the wrong time going back because we were all about driving through huge volumes at that time. What's happened since then, the market has developed and matured. What you've got now is a lot of the, the high volume customers have converted to point of use. So what you've got now is lower throughput per customer, per cooler, for bottled water cooler customers. You've also got this. There's quite a lot of small SMEs when we, we would contact them at Angel Springs, for example. And what they've done, they've moved out of their office and they've set up an office at home. So I think there's a flourishing um, home at office business. So the bottom loading cooler is not meant for users who use 50, 60 bottles a year. Yeah. But for users who use 25 mm -hmm. to 30, it is. Yeah. So it's fairly cost effective. It can be used by females in the office because they don't have to lift the bottle up. And also, it, it deals quite effectively with some of the potential sanitisation and contamination issues. So I actually think it's quite innovative and it looks like it's very well made. So I think that there needs to be some innovation like that. Also, if you look at there's some, some activity uh, taking place now for uh, the home market. You've got uh, the Bebo cooler, there's the Strauss cooler, and also there's... Um, uh, the Virgin Group that have invested in Strauss Water. Now, <clears throat> I'm not so sure I agree that there is a profitable home market to be had. But whether I'm right or wrong, it doesn't matter because time will tell. However, what will happen is that there will be uh, considerable investment and therefore activity and interest generated in the domestic market by these particular companies, and in particular with Strauss uh, and the Virgin Partnership, who will put considerable amounts of money into sales and marketing. Very good, yeah. And are there certain sectors or demographic groups which are showing more growth than others, do you think? Yeah, well, the difficulty one, uh, so the difficult one to begin with is the public sector. Public sector are under pressure for prices. Uh, there's also uh, political pressure for them not to spend money on water and so on and so forth. So they will reduce and will continue to reduce. But the private sector is still growing, um, it is especially the SME market. Something has to replace those businesses in the economy. And you know, out of every difficulty will come opportunities. There are people being made redundant in the public sector and the, um, the ripple effect that that's having. However, what's, that, what, what's happening is it's creating opportunities for the people. People are leaving jobs that they thought they were in, the jobs for life. They've got some redundancy money and people are starting small businesses. So actually the SME sector is now having a very positive impact mm -hmm. on the marketplace. But um, I think also in terms of uh, market sectors, wh what we've done in the past, it's, it's been a scattergun approach. It's kind of one size fits all. And I think what needs to happen going forward, and I'll go back to this 80% that don't have a water cooler, there needs to be um, particular segments of the market where we would um, have focused targeting, not just in terms of how we market that, but in terms of the products and services that we would offer. I think also it's fair to say that um, a lot of the growth and a lot of the profitability is coming from London and the South East as well, okay. yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, and finally, I wondered if um, water cooler companies should be looking at new areas such as coffee or vending, um, boiling machines and so on in order to grow their businesses. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And um, quite a lot of the, the, the small and medium sized operators that they own and manage businesses have branched out into things like uh, fruit and vegetables and coffees and income drinks and so on and so forth. Um, but but I, I think there's a difference I think there's a difference between complementary products and replacement products. I'm not so sure that replacement products is a sensible way to go. First of all, the question that nobody is answering is, how do you go above the 18% penetration level? So I know that there's 80% of the market still doesn't have a water cooler. And I think that is the, the, the way where people should be spending their time, effort, money. I think complementary products, possibly coffee, are, 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 are interesting. What I don't think people should do 
totally diversify themselves from their core market because the coal market still has fantastic opportunities. I think also it's, what's really important is this. The market is not growing. It may even be declining by a couple of points. But there's an important differential between the market growing and the market's potential to grow. The market has massive potential. Mm -hmm. The fact that our industry is unable to take advantage of that is, 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 the, is, the, is the real challenge. Okay, John, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for downloading this foodbev.com podcast. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Vimeo, Google Plus and LinkedIn.